all grade 10 learners. Have a nice day. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so you will be notified every time I have new video tutorial and mathematics. Thank you. For today's video, I'll be discussing to you on how to find the dividend, divisor, quotient, and remainder using synthetic division. This is Grade 10 lesson for week 7 in the first quarter. Now we will consider the first example. Find the dividend, divisor, quotient, and remainder from the given synthetic division. This is our given. So if we will be given this one, the first row in the upper part corresponds to the dividend. Now, how will we know the respective term in the dividend? Okay, the last number, negative 8, corresponds to the constant term. Next, negative 4 is the first degree term. So, therefore, if we are going to make use of the variable x, there will be a variable x beside negative 4. Since the degree is 1, first degree term, we're not going to write 1 as our exponent. It's already understood that the exponent is 1. Next, after the first, we have the second degree term. So therefore, the exponent of x here is 2. And lastly, we have here 3 for the third degree term. So we will have... 3x cubed. So therefore, our dividend now is 3x cubed. Since it is positive, so we have plus 7x squared. Then we have here negative 4x, so we have negative 4x. And the last term, which is constant term, is negative 8. Okay. Now for our divisor. So this will be our divisor part. So we're going to follow the format of x minus r, where r refers to the value here in our divisor. So what are we going to do is just substitute. So just copy x, copy the minus sign, and then r will be substituted by negative 1. So we have here negative 1. Next, simplify further. So we have to bring down x. So negative times negative 1, that is equal to positive 1. So this is now our divisor. So our divisor is x plus 1. Next, we have to determine the quotient. The quotient is... And the remainder part can be found at the bottom row. So we have here. The last number corresponds to the remainder. While the rest of the number corresponds to the quotient. Okay. For the quotient, of course, we have to start with the constant term. So, negative 8 is the constant term. 4 is the first degree term. So, therefore, it has a variable of x. And 3 corresponds to the second degree term. Therefore, it has a literal coefficient of x squared. Since it's the second degree term. That is why our quotient is 3x squared plus 4x minus 8. So we have 3x squared plus 4x minus 8. And of course, our remainder is 0. So just copy this one. This is the remainder part here. Now let's have Another example. Okay, same in example number one. The first row in the upper part is the 
dividend. For the dividend, we have to start with the constant term. So, negative 3 is a constant term. Then, the first degree term. So, again, we are going to make use of the variable x this time. So, this is a first degree term. Negative 4 is the second degree term. So, this is for x squared. Next, negative 12 is the third degree term. So, this is for x cubed. Then, after the third, of course, you will have fourth degree term. This will be for the x, the power of 4. And lastly, we have the fifth degree term. So, we have x to the power of 5. So, therefore, our dividend now is 3x to the power of 5. We just copy that one. Okay, next is we have 0x to the power of 4. We are not going to copy 0x to the power of 4. Okay. Then we have negative 12x cubed. Next, negative 4x squared. The same with 0x to the power of 4. We are not going to copy 0x because 0 times x is that is equal to 0. And lastly, the constant term is negative 3. Okay. For our divisor. So again, this is the divisor part here. We have to follow the formula. So we have x minus r. Then, substitute r. This time our r is equal to 2. So therefore, our divisor is equal to x minus 2. Next, for our quotient, again, the bottom row is, it is where we can find the quotient and the remainder. Again, the last number here corresponds to the remainder. Then this one is our quotient. So, the first number here in the quotient corresponds to the constant term. Next, after the constant, the first degree term. After the first degree term, so we have the second degree term. Next, the third degree term. And lastly, 3 is the fourth degree term. So, therefore, our quotient is 3x to the power of 4, just copy this one, plus 6x cubed. Again, we're not going to write 0x squared. Then we have negative 4x minus 8. For our remainder, we have negative 19. last example we have this given there are so many zeros so this is for our dividend part here let's begin the last number corresponds to the constant term first degree term second degree term third degree term fourth degree term fifth degree term but if you have observed the fourth, third, second, first degree term are all zeros, so we're not going to write them all. Okay, so for the four, we have x to the power of five. So our dividend now is four x to the power of five. Just copy. Do not write any more the zeros. And then we have negative one. Or minus 1. 4x to the power of 5 minus 1. For our divisor, again, this is our divisor. So follow the formula, substitute. So we have now x minus 1 as our divisor. For our quotient, 
Okay. The bottom row, we have to start with the remainder. This is the constant term. First degree term, so therefore it has a variable x. Next, the second degree term, this will be for x squared. Then, third degree term, this will be for 4x cubed. And lastly, fourth degree term, so x to the power of 4. So, our quotient now is 4x to the power of 4 plus 4x cubed plus 4x squared plus 4x plus 4. And our remainder is 3. Okay, always remember that in determining the dividend, it is always the first row in the upper part. And for the dividend, you always begin with the constant. After the constant, the first degree term, second, third degree, fourth degree, fifth, and so on. Okay? And for your divisor, it is here. Just follow this format, x minus r, then substitute. And for your remainder, always the last number in the bottom row. So, this is always the remainder. And of course, for your quotient, the same. You have to start with the constant, the first degree term, second degree term, third, fourth, and so on. Okay? Hopefully, you learned something for today's video. Thank you so much for watching guys, kindly like, or if you have questions regarding the video, just write it in the comment box. Kindly share also to other students for them to learn or master the lesson. And please don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos and turn on the bell for notifications. Before I end, let me share to one of the verses from the Bible. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalms 46 verse 1. That's all for today and God bless you all.